Hey guys, Ryan Dossie here, and I've got Noah Gilliam here with me. We are in Indianapolis, it's where all of my assets are at. So Noah's actually an equity owner in our properties now. We've got over 140 units, uh, a lot of, a lot of work that goes into that. <laughs> um, I get a kick out of people who think that like they're going to buy a couple rentals and it's going to be like passive income. Right, they don't have to do anything, um, never touch anything. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's mailbox it's mailbox money for me, um, not so much for our staff. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to walk you through kind of what the different pieces of a property management company look like, as well as why we do that in-house. But just kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what the organization chart looks like. That way, if you are doing your own property management and wanting to kind of get some things off your plate, or if you're an out-of-state investor like me and wondering who you need on payroll or who you need on the ground, we're gonna show you exactly how we're managing north of $8 million worth of rentals that range from you know A class to C, C. C. Not, yeah, we don't C. go below C, but A to C class rentals uh, every single month. Let's dive right in. So first things first is gonna be why we do our management in-house. So a lot of people think that it's like a cost saving things of that we are able to pay less than what it would cost us to hire a property manager. And that's really not the case. In my experience, it's gonna be about the same or even a little bit more expensive to have your own staff doing it on payroll. Right. But the reason why we do that is we're trying to minimize the amount of turnover inside our portfolio. Um, there was an article that came out that said one of the biggest metrics that tracks whether or not a rental portfolio is profitable is how long you're able to keep your, your residents in place. Uh, basically, how much turnover are you having or not having? And what we typically see when somebody leaves, it's either because maintenance requests aren't being handled in a timely manner, um, they don't feel like you care about them or really they just can't afford the place. Right. So by having you know, full-time staff there to field calls, answer questions, handle maintenance requests, we're able to control the experience that our residences have. Um, the other thing that I think kind of comes into play with it is people like to feel like they're renting from like a small business versus like a large property manager. And I think the other thing you have as well is when you're going through a property management company, say you're getting 600 bucks a month in rent on like a you know C-class place, how far does $60 go in dealing with the drama of a C-class right. tenant? Not, not very far, right? It's one of the reasons we only manage our own stuff. We don't take on anything for anybody else because we want our stuff to truly be our priority. With a property manager, it's kind of like most services, like squeaky business gets the wheel if you're hiring a company to do it. So let's kind of jump into the job descriptions and roles of who we have on payroll. So the first person on the team that's gonna handle the resident experience is gonna be the leasing agent. And our leasing agents, they, um, they answer all prospective leads, they call um, prospective leads, email, all of that good stuff to get, get a hold of the people. And once they've got a hold of our prospective residents, that's when they schedule showings, they meet them at the property. Do walkthroughs. Yeah, they do the walkthroughs. They make sure the properties are clean and presentable for showing. Yep. Um, and then once we had a walkthrough, we, uh, then we walk them through the application process. They're also making sure the person's qualified to rent right. from us in the first place before we even waste their time or ours going out to show them something that we wouldn't rent to them. Right, right. So then they do the application, they send, they take all the paperwork for the background screening. Make sure it's all filled out correctly, right. legible, all that good stuff. The second person that you're typically gonna have inside a property management company is your property manager. So once the leasing agent kind of tees it up, application comes back, it's going over to the property manager to determine whether or not we're going to rent to this person, um, You know, making sure that all the, I's, all the I's are dotted and kind of T's are crossed. They're also kind of who that person gets like handed over to. Right. So if there's maintenance issues, they're going through the property manager to schedule things like you know, getting work orders filled, 
Um, if they are you know, behind on rent, that's the person who's calling them. If they have you know, an issue with a neighbor or something, that's kind of who they're reaching out to. That really becomes kind of like their main point of contact inside our organization. The uh, next person on the team is gonna be our admin and yep. they take care of doing all the accounts payable, accounts receivable, paying out all of our vendors for all of our projects we have, and the big one, collecting rent. So they're the ones who put rent on the books. They let the property manager know if people Somebody's are behind. Somebody's behind or delinquent or if we need to post. Right, right, handling all the, the posting for evictions, all of the paperwork behind the yeah. money aspect. Yeah, it's a, a good one. Will save you a lot of time, money, and heartache. A bad one will make your life a living hell. <laughs> like it's just, we've we've had both and we really have an A player in this role now. It's not really something you're gonna like skimp on. Uh, I mean, the gal who does ours has literally done bookkeeping for seven plus figure businesses for like 30 years. Yeah. Uh, like she basically told us she's gonna work for us for the next 10 to 15 years and then she's retired, she's done. So you're wanting somebody who's really skilled in this, who understands the ins and outs, who can really show you where money is coming in, where it's going out, as well as go over things like where to optimize. Um, ours found, for instance, that one of our old uh, leasing agents wasn't letting people know that they were going to be paying utilities. So we had a couple properties that we were paying utilities on that we didn't need to be. So right. get those put over into the resident's name, boost the cash flow on that particular property. But there, I would say kind of like the the glue almost that keeps kind of the whole machine turning. Another, I guess another neat thing that she's done for us recently is um, they can monitor all your utility bills when they come in and when they're being paid out. So we noticed uh, a vacant property that we have. Uh, it went from being $50 a month to all of a sudden we had to charge for $2,000 a month. So the instant we saw that we knew something was wrong and without the careful eyes of our admin, we would have totally missed that. Another critical piece to our team is our project manager. And our project manager handles all of our turns, all of our big rehabs. Kind of like a general contractor, yeah, honestly. Yeah, we, just, we used to use the GC, but we've we've moved off of using GCs and we're now subbing out our own projects. Right, it gives us better, uh, better control of all of our projects, having this manager. And they can split it up into, is it a turn work? Is it a big rehab? They write all of our scopes. That way we have it dialed into a T, what mm -hmm. exactly our subs are gonna be doing. And then the project manager also, they're out at the projects daily. They're looking at everything. Yeah, they're monitoring huge. labor, they're monitoring supplies. They do all the purchasing. So they know. Um, they know where stuff's at, where it needs to be at, if it's on schedule, behind right. schedule, if subs deserve to be paid yet or not. And um, they're also coordinating things like making sure we get W9s and things of that nature from subs, which we'll, we'll do a different video right. on what we collect before we even pay a contractor. But it's, it is one of those roles of like, if you, it's kind of like hiring an acquisitions manager. It's a lot of in the field, a lot of driving, kind of a lot of hand holding. And if you don't have somebody else doing it, you're doing it. And one of the problems I see typically when investors are managing their own projects is they're just not out at their properties enough. So if somebody doesn't show up for two or three days, they don't know because they're only right. there once a week. The kind of final one we're going to touch on here is on staff maintenance. Uh, this was our second hire. Yep, second hire. Um, and we actually kind of like hacked the system a little bit in that we had them do tear outs for us because we didn't have like full time maintenance work. I think we brought them on when we had maybe 50 units. Yeah. 40, right 50 units. 40. Um, you add another 100 and it's, it's now a full time <laughs> job of, you know, hey, toilets running, uh, this outlet doesn't work, that kind of stuff. One thing I will say about this role that we kind of learned, you want to very, very carefully kind of background check and screen these folks. Um, we had a gentleman who worked for us who was great, uh, who got pulled over with syringes in our work truck. Uh, this was probably, what, a year ago? Yeah, a year ago. Um, nobody could gut a house single-handedly faster than this guy. But it we was, now know why it was him and death. <laughs> <laughs> so you you want to really make sure that this is a role you're screening for. Um, another huge thing is to check references. I recommend having like a hit list of common repairs and making sure it's stuff that they can do. We had another guy who was in that role who didn't last very long, who uh, we caught like YouTubing things like you know how to replace a toilet while sitting there trying to replace a toilet. 
I'm, I'm not looking for like a, a YouTube <laughs> maintenance tech. I'm looking for somebody that's done this for a while and has some experience. Right. And it, you also really want somebody who's pretty clean, pretty safe, pretty personable, because this is somebody who's going to be having contact with your residents. So you don't want somebody who's like, you know, creepy or kind of like dirty. You, you want this to be somebody that you feel good about having in your properties and around your, your residents. Because that's one of those other things. Like if the maintenance guy scares them, they're not going to tell you when stuff breaks and they're just going to leave because right. they don't want to get stuff fixed, right? So you want to make sure you have somebody personable and likable in that role. But in a nutshell, those are kind of the different pieces that are going on inside a property management company. You're not gonna start out and just go like hire five $50,000 a year employees. It would make no sense for you. But chances are you're gonna kind of do what we did of realize you need some help with the property management. Right. And then realizing that your general contractor, your subs really aren't all that interested in fulfilling $45 work orders for a property. Um, so that's a piece that you're probably going to end up pulling somebody in sooner or later and then it just kind of kind of grows out from there. But that's what the infrastructure looks like and kind of how we're managing 150 units here in the Midwest. Thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video. Hopefully it's informative for you and kind of shows you what the organization chart looks like and kind of what roles you're going to have and kind of who you're, what skill sets you're looking to fill them. Be sure to like, subscribe, and as always, if you found it helpful, please share it with your friends. We've got more content coming out soon. Talk to you guys next time. All right, one, two, three, action. The uh, first player that we have, um, that came out weird. Play up, um, play up. Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I just go? Yeah. Uh, the uh, first play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs>